I built gadgets, uh, technologies that can uh, hopefully save the world. Uh, we often joke in the lab that I don't think we have saved uh, many patients uh, or individuals yet, uh, but we try. And I think this talk is mostly about how we try and how we recognize how the limits of our trying can inform our understanding of the limits of technology and the possibilities of accepting the reality of Jesus Christ as somebody who can save the world. Um, what you see here um, are Lego blocks that we deploy uh, to use as lab on chip platforms so that laboratory techs in the developing world can make their own diagnostics. We have things such as uh, solar powered autoclaves that can't uh, sterilize medical instrumentation in the middle of nowhere. Uh, smart diagnostics that instead of saying yes and no display encrypted codes so that tuberculosis patients can stay on their meds and in return we give them cell phone minutes. And little boxes filled with toys and prototyping kits so that nurses and doctors and healthcare workers in developing countries and in our own country uh, can come up with their own ideas about what medical technology should be instead of relying on what we often come up with at MIT and other places in the developed world that um, we think ought to be. And this takes me to my first point, which is traditionally we think of technology to save the world or technology to affect the world in any way as uh, being best brought by those experts sitting in places like our institution coming up with all sorts of different ideas, whether it's space robots or nanotechnology or quantum physics, that then we de just deploy to the world. It's our gift to the world, our export, if you will. Uh, and largely, we see the fruits of that. We, we, the computers that we use, the, the, the gadgets that we wake up to and, and go to sleep with um, are often the result of those efforts. Um, and, and efforts of, of people like ourselves and, 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 and what you may do with your own careers. Um, we try to take that a second step and, and when we go to a developing country, we realize that we lack that type of brain trust that we enjoy over here and the resources that we could deploy otherwise. Um, and we often end up in places like this where there is simply nothing. There is no inspiration, there is no lab, there is no capital equipment. Um, and instead, we, we, we run into people's own idealized view of what their inventive possibilities are. And in their world, what I find when I go down there is that they have no problem accepting their own limits and of accepting that even though they can also come up with ideas, um, their brain trust often becomes a prayer uh, to find inspiration to come up with a better idea. And, and it's not a mark of their limits, it's a mark of their possibilities. Um, the Bible tells us that because as he is, so we are in this world. And that means that they, if they believe that, um, their impact on the world can become just as big as, as God's impact on the world. Um, and I'm actually a technology optimist. Um, I think we've all seen graphs like this where technology is just on this exponential ride where we can all collect the jetpacks at the end of this evening and fly off uh, in, in, into outer space. And you know, there's wonderful quotes. Niels Bohr said, technology has advanced more in the last 30 years than in the previous 2000 and the exponential increase. And, and I think every 10 years somebody else comes up with a better version uh, of that quote. Um, and um, what I find when we go down to places in the developing world where there is poverty and suffering and, and, and challenges is that um, largely it's often not about the gadget and it's not about the technology. Um, it's actually a lot of other things that, 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 that matter. And uh, one, one of those things that, that, uh, that, 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 that we look for is insight. Um, insight to, do, to, to develop new technologies is, is, um, is, is often, at least for me as a Christian, um, uh, inspired by the example that, that Jesus gave when he walked on this earth, because he taught us to care. He taught us to, to look at the lowest common denominator uh, of a population and care about 
that population instead of, of just hanging out with high-end intellectuals who would parse the nuances of the Old Testament. He cared about uh, people who hadn't even read the Old Testament. Um, and he made a difference. And um, experiments that take that, that insight out of, of a society and the insight that, that, that the reality of Jesus uh, can affect a society have proven to be to be failures. You, you can throughout history you can see many forms of societies where where it tried to take that away from societies, where it tried to take uh, the possibilities of, of 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 a belief in the Christian faith outside, and 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 more often they, than not they struggle, but often they endure and they come back stronger. And it's never about the gadget; it's about about the insight. Um, the other thing that we often uh, recognize is that it's less about the hardware and it's more about the intangible. And so the charts that I showed previously which show that, you know, hardware and technology and gadgetry is advancing at an ever-increasing pace are all true and, 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 and the statistics are there. But when we look at our own lives, that chart doesn't look like that at all. And when we look at our parents' lives and our grandparents' lives, the chart is more about a series of oscillations, of ups and downs. Um, and what I find as I lead my life as a scientist is that um, Jesus talked about that and he, and, he, and he predicted that that's exactly what's going to happen. He, and he said, you will have tribulation, um, but be of good cheer. Um, I have overcome the world. In other parts it says it, it's, it's, you will walk through the valley of death. It's not a, a matter of if, it's about when. But there are answers to that. Um, and then finally, what we find is that uh, largely it's about hope. For those individuals that don't have the brain trust, that don't have the resources to find out how to solve these, these problems, it's less about the intellectual challenge of um, our own experiments where if we run up against a wall, we can often chalk it up to, well, science will take care of it in the next generation. Because for those nurses and for those patients and doctors in the developing world and in other places where suffering and poverty are reality, it isn't very much about them and about the now and about what can we solve. And hope cannot be manufactured. Um, there, but, there, but there is a certain confidence in knowing that at a certain point you don't have the answers. But you make a, a, a very uh, determined choice um, to rely on something bigger than yourself. Um, and and in, in, in my life, that's exactly how, how I, I, I conduct my own professional challenges. Um, I think on paper, I'm woefully underqualified for what I do, hence I use toys. But uh, when, when we go down to, to, to the places where we try to make an impact, I always remind ourselves that it's really not about what I can do. It's about what, what, what uh, the God that I believe in can do it through, through, through me.